What's going on guys? Welcome to the channel today. My name is Buckeye. Thank you so much for tuning in. Today we're going to be talking about Halo Reach. This is an interesting topic and, and really what I want to do with this is just create a conversation with everybody in the comments. I want to see what everyone's opinions are going to be based off this idea. So today we're not going to be talking about any news or anything like that. This is just an idea that I had that was like, oh, okay, interesting. Let's, let's see what other people would think about this. So here's the question for the video today. What if... Halo Reach never happened. Where would Halo be now if Halo Reach never actually occurred? This is a really interesting idea and something that really makes you think. And it can come up with all kinds of different different ways of thinking. So let's go ahead and get into that. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Let's get into today's video. Halo Reach released back in 2010 and was the following game in terms of mainline, if you will, after Halo 3. It wasn't a part of the mainline series, but it was the next big release. You had Halo 3 ODST after Halo 3, but that wasn't a mainline release or a big release. It was an add-on, essentially, to Halo 3. Halo Reach was the next big official release that sort of took over Halo 3, if that makes any sense. So Halo Reach comes out in 2010 and takes over Halo 3. Halo Reach comes out and is a little bit divisive. Uh, comparing to Halo 2 to Halo 3 because they introduced armor abilities as well as removing the BR in favor for the DMR as well as things like Bloom. They added and changed a lot of things in Halo Reach that people didn't like but at the same time they did a lot of really good things in terms of one of my most favorite things about the game is the UI. The UI and the menu system is just absolutely phenomenal. It is in my opinion probably the best in the series. Uh, they did just an absolutely phenomenal job with that and I really wish that they would go back to something similar to that. So that's something I really, really enjoyed from Halo Reach. Another thing was the art style. A lot of people revere Halo Reach as the best art style in Halo thus far, and I wouldn't necessarily d disagree with them. I absolutely love Halo 1, 2, and 3, but at the same time, I really enjoy Halo Reach, and I'm curious to see what Master Chief would look like under the Halo Reach umbrella of the art design. I'm very curious to see, because I don't... I could be wrong, but I don't believe he actually ever showed up in the campaign. Correct me if I'm wrong. If I'm wrong, please let me know. The art design overall was phenomenal in Halo Reach. I thought it was absolutely amazing. The design of the elites to the, the UNSC, the Marines, the uh, Noble Team, everything was just beautiful. The environments, everything was really, really nice and really set the tone for how the game of Halo Reach was actually going to play out in the campaign. Now, one thing I wasn't a fan of necessarily was the multiplayer's uh, art design. Just in the fact of a lot of the maps were actually Forge maps, which is okay, but it was just a lot of gray. A lot of gray everywhere, which wasn't super pleasing to the eye. I definitely preferred playing on actual created maps for the game as opposed to the Forge maps. That's not a huge deal and, and isn't like a massive problem, but I do want to point it out is that's something that I didn't really enjoy as much about Halo Reach. Now, of course, we come to the most divisive thing about Halo Reach, and that is just the way that they changed up the gameplay. They changed up the gameplay a good bit. Now, if we fast forward to Halo 5 and Halo 4, they really didn't change much at all, but uh, they did change up at the time. They did change it up quite a bit with the introduction of Spartan abilities, or of art, I'm sorry, of armor abilities, Sprint specifically. This was the first time Sprint had ever been included in a Halo game, even though Bungie had been wanting to uh, implement it since Halo 2. Uh, this was the first time that they actually ever put it into the game. Needless to say, it was very interesting. It was an armor ability, obviously, so you had to select it uh, itself, and that was the only armor ability that you would receive when you had selected that particular loadout. But it was not very helpful to the gameplay and map design. Because of the new armor abilities that were introduced into the game, map design had to be enlarged. The map Zealot in Halo Reach, which is a rough remake of Midship from Halo 2, had to be enlarged significantly to favor the armor abilities. If you actually look at the map Zealot, it's actually a pretty big map, especially when you're considering the fact that it's supposed to be a renewed version of Midship in Halo Reach. So already you can see that the overall gameplay and design of the multiplayer had to be significantly changed in order to work with armor abilities. Now, you can be on both sides of the coin, and that's why I'm making this video, because I'm kind of curious to see what people's opinions and their own conversation will be based off this idea. 
because Halo Reach did do some really good things, but they also did some divisive things that ended up kind of sparking the distance and the direction that Halo has gone since then. Now, in Halo Reach, armor abilities were set to specific loadouts that you could choose based off the map that you were playing. So on different maps and game modes, they would give you different loadouts that you could select to play with on that map. So you could have things like the jetpack and the armor lock and, of course, sprint and more. And that was the first time that anything like that had ever been in Halo. And some people liked it, some people didn't. But no matter if you liked it or didn't like it, there's no denying the fact that since Halo Reach, much inspiration has been taken from that game in the most recent titles. Most notably, Halo 4 seemed like instead of kind of backtracking a little bit from Halo Reach, considering a lot of people did not really enjoy a lot of the new things in Halo Reach, instead of backtracking, they instead they, they buckled down on what was already in Halo Reach and they went forward with it and, and pushed it even farther than what it was before and just created armor abilities for everybody and you can make loadouts like crazy and the ordnance drops and it was just, it was essentially a Call of Duty Halo clone when it came out. Now, it did progress to become a much better game towards the end of its life cycle, but that's like putting lipstick on a pig. It really didn't do much for the overall core gameplay of the game. And then, of course, after Halo 4, we had Halo 5, which recognized some of its faults in Halo 4, and it backtracked a little bit, but instead of having armor abilities, we then moved into Spartan abilities. So they kind of went back a little bit to the Halo Reach sort of style thing, where there's very select things that you could use, and everybody had access to them, only this time around, everybody had access to them all at once. So as opposed to you selecting a particular armor ability, now you get all these Spartan abilities at one time. Spartan Charge, Thrust, Ground Pound, etc. So this, in a way, buckled down, but also backtracked a little bit to make it a little bit more even. And that was the idea when they were talking about Halo 5, uh, actually in the Sprint uh, docuseries that came out before the game actually released, they were talking about trying to make everything even for everybody else and really competitive. Now, competitive is kind of a subjective term nowadays. It seems that different people have different opinions on what that actually means. We're not going to get into that in today's video, but that's part of what happened, is they really wanted to focus on competitiveness, but also keeping the abilities and the randomness that they had included in Halo 4, so they just kind of switched it around a little bit to see what would happen. So I say all that to say this. Halo Reach sparked the next couple games in the mainline series to go off in a completely different direction than what was there beforehand. So the question that I beg to you is this. Where do you think Halo would be right now if we did not have Halo Reach? If Halo Reach did not release, and instead of having a Halo Reach, we had a Halo 4 right after Halo 3, where do you think Halo would be right now? Do you think we'd still go in a completely different direction than what we did in Halo 1, 2, and 3? Or do you think we would continue on the basis of Halo 3 and just improve upon it a little bit, innovate it a little bit, and keep moving forward from there? What do you think? Me, personally, I'm not really sure. Because either way, Bungie wasn't going to continue with the series after Halo Reach, so I guess they technically could have made the Halo 4 if it released in 2010, so then perhaps they would have stuck with the Halo 3 style. But either way, 343 was eventually going to take over the game's series. The question really comes down to what would 343 have done when they got a hold of the keys? Would they have stuck with the original formula, or would they have done with what they did, sort of took inspiration from Halo Reach? So that's really it. That's what I want to talk about today. Where do you think Halo would be nowadays? if Halo Reach never actually occurred. Let me know in the comments down below what you are thinking. Give me your entire thought about this process. Start a conversation, I'll definitely respond, and I wanna see everyone's opinions on this. This is an interesting idea, and I'm curious to see what people's thoughts are. If you enjoyed today's video, obviously give it a like, and if you didn't, of course, always give it a dislike. And if you wanna see more content like this moving forward, be sure to subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next one.